Hey folks, today is Friday, August 19th, 2022. As usual, it's me, Jake Baldino, here to talk about all the video game news that has been going on this week, and it's a wild week. I'm really excited about the first story that we got for you guys, because it's literally Dead Island 2. It's back from the dead. Yeah, thanks to seemingly like an Amazon listing link, uh, it spilled the beans that there is an imminent reveal, possibly at Gamescom next week, uh, for the resurgence of Dead Island 2. Dude, this game was announced in like 2014, which is insane. I remember seeing prototype versions of the game at like my first E3 when I was a, a wee lad. As you probably know, it has changed hands and changed development teams so many times over the years and really went dark. We all thought it was dead, but here it is seemingly triumphantly returning. We've got leaked screenshots, leaked box arts. I don't know how much I can show on screen here without the video getting taken down, but yeah, uh, it also describes pretty much a game that we expected all the way back from the get-go. You play as a couple of unique characters that all have their own personalities uh, and different things. They're all immune to the zombie outbreak. It takes place in Hollywood, in California, and it's seemingly going to have a fun satirical spin on that. And uh, yeah, I don't, this is when people don't believe certain things out there, like gaming news or rumors, I say, crazier things have happened and I can always point to something like this. Does stuff like this happen in other industries? I only pay attention to the video game industry. I, I don't know. I mean, like they canceled the Batgirl movie like it was nothing. But video games, developers, they just want that game made. They will work on Dead Island for years and years and dump tons of money into it. Is it gonna be any good? Especially considering there are so many other zombie games out in this world, I have no idea, but I'm just here for the ride. And speaking of a ride, we got more huge acquisitions from big gaming companies. This time, it's once again Embracer Group. Embracer Group, uh, for those of you that don't know, is part of the whole THQ Nordic thing. Uh, they also bought some properties from Square Enix that we've talked about previously. Uh, you know, the people behind Deus Ex, Tomb Raider. And now they're back again with another announcement where they just kind of went hog wild and have seemingly bought up a bunch of things. Tripwire Interactive, the folks behind uh, most recently Maneater, but also uh, The Killing Floor, stuff like that. Also, it's worth pointing out that Saber Interactive is involved with that, and uh, they have now reiterated that the Knights of the Old Republic 2 remake issues, uh, that is now fully over to Saber Interactive for development, and uh, seemingly the game is still coming. A lot of people are thinking that that means we're gonna see it soon. I don't know about that. It's changing a whole team. Embracer Group has also acquired Tuxedo Labs. That's the people behind Teardown, the pretty awesome PC destructible voxel-based game. Limited Run Games, which for some of my homies out there to also buy physical games and uh, especially like cool physical versions of indie games. That's pretty big. Also, uh, they apparently have an accessories company, a Japanese arcade developer, and also a, a fairly big purchase uh, undisclosed as of right now. So they gobbled up something else and we just don't know what it is yet. But the biggest and, and kind of unexpected thing is they have purchased Middle Earth Enterprises, which means that they have access to uh, create all different types of Lord of the Rings things, not just video games, but also uh, TV and movie things. They already talked about like spin-off movies like about Galadriel or, or Gandalf or something. The Lord of the Rings, the Tolkien things are actually very complicated as you probably know. I mean, the fact that Amazon's making a show, Warner Brothers has made uh, games, it's all over the place. But uh, essentially what this means is that uh, this Embracer group getting a big piece of that pie is pretty exciting because I expect them to put that to work. That's a huge money maker. It's a crazy license thing. I mean, the fact that they bought Deus Ex and they have expressed some intent to actually make a new Deus Ex game means that they just want to start putting this stuff out there. So I'd say expect to maybe see a bunch more Lord of the Rings games, at least at some point, which is funny because as of right now, all we have coming is that Gollum game, which doesn't look like the greatest thing in the world. You know, I'm going to reserve judgment for when I play it. But if we can get some bigger scale, cooler stuff that explores the world of the Middle Earth, I'm down, man. It's just crazy how just in the last few years, Embracer Group has really become one of the ones to watch if you pay attention to like the inside baseball of the game industry. I'm definitely curious to hear what you guys think about this and just with what they do have and hoping they actually put all these licenses to work. I'm hoping it just means more stuff. I am just a simple lizard brain consumer. That's how I go, but let me know what you guys think. Next up, we got a big lengthy trailer for A Plague Tale Requiem. This is kind of like a gameplay overview trailer. It shows snippets of different uh, types of gameplay moments in the game. It's really just like a big long trailer, but it's absolutely 
stunning looking. I'm going to be honest though, I kind of just skipped around. I didn't want to watch the whole thing because as some of you guys know, like this is one of my most anticipated games for the rest of this year if it doesn't get delayed like everything else. So I almost like don't want to have too much of it spoiled. Uh, for me, some of the fun with these games is just the imagery and the spooky gross stuff that they come up with. So I want to experience that for my own, but the trailer is still pretty dope. So check it out. Everything I talk about, of course, and this trailer is going to be linked in the description down below. Next up, this episode is brought to you by our longtime sponsor, Vessi. Now, if you're new around here, just know that these are the go-to dependable shoes that we've been recommending for a really long time. Now, I actually have a fresh pair for myself right here. Because whether you're wearing them for work or fun or just chilling, they got a bunch of different sizes and colors and styles to make everybody happy. It's very loud, very loud. Can you hear this? All of their kicks are great, including their newest the Everyday Move with some extra arch support, as well as their Chelsea boot style if you're looking for something a little bit more stylish. Now, all of their kicks are sustainably made, vegan, and 100% waterproof, which is our favorite feature. Believe it or not, it's been a pretty dry August here in New York, so we don't have new videos of me jumping in puddles, but still, we are ready for all the seasons that hit us here. And thanks to Vessi's material, they'd keep your feet dry, but thankfully cool in the summer and warm in the winter. Now these shoes, there's a reason we've been talking about them for years now. If you're looking for reliability, dependability, and most importantly, some comfort, these are for a variety of different use cases and they're definitely your best bet. So if you wanna check them out, just head to vessi.com slash gameranks or click it in the link down in the description here and use code gameranks for $25 off any pair of adult Vessi shoes. But thanks again to Vesti for sponsoring our videos. Next up, of course, I got a bunch of things linked in the description down below, some brief videos and stuff you want to check out. The first is the announcement trailer and reveal of uh, Dragon Ball stuff in Fortnite. Fortnite just has everything now. It's weird. It feels like a fever dream. I have no idea what's going on every time I look at the gameplay now. But uh, to see Goku, Vegeta, all these people flying around, I I'm excited for Fortnite players. They made Goku a string bean, though. What happened with that character model? I don't know, maybe I'm nitpicking. That's just me. But uh, if you're playing with that stuff, let me know how it is. I mean, the fact that you can do energy blasts, fly around, I, it's a lot. And technically now, you can be Venom and shoot Goku in the face with a gun. Video games are truly magic. Oh, also wanted to link a new trailer for Natural Vision Evolved. Uh, this is the kind of long-running... Uh, Grand Theft Auto 5 graphics mod stuff. It's insane. It's absolutely stunning. They've been doing this work for a long time, but also it's worth pointing out that the trailers they put together are really, really well done. They get you kind of hyped for these graphics overhauls. So if that's your type of thing, check that out. Uh, also, speaking of mods, uh, Spider-Man is now on PC. Been loving it, very cool, but really been loving seeing the modders get to work, and they got to work quick. We got a bunch of stuff. Nexus mod is filled with fun stuff thanks to creative, talented people, like the ability to play as Aunt May or Black Cat. Uh, cool new spins on the suits. Most importantly, a black suit variant, a symbiote variant. Tight, dude. But also fun stuff like no HUD, different HUDs, uh, different types of visual filters to make the game more cinematic. There is so much out there already for such a cool game. So uh, yeah, just kind of wanted to get the word out more. Also two games this week, don't miss. The first is Midnight Fight Express. This is kind of a top-down brawler style game. It's kind of Arkham, uh, Batman Arkham style fighting, but with customizable character and skill trees. It's pretty cool. I've been digging it. But also Roller Drome. I think personally, this is gonna be one of my favorite games of the year. It's Tony Hawk, Jet Set Radio, kind of Sunset Overdrive meets third person shooters like Max Payne or even John Woo Stranglehold. That's a throwback. Uh, it's a really fun, cheap, simple game that I love. And another brief thing, uh, just a PSA, just a, a thing to know if you're following gaming stuff, the Gamescom opening night live stream thing with Jeff Keighley is going on next Tuesday. So Tune into that and expect some new stuff. Probably a lot of new reveals and updates on games we already know about, but maybe a couple of surprises. Uh, we did interview Jeff Keighley on our new podcast, the Friends Per Second podcast, linked below. He seems pretty excited about the event. I mean, obviously, he's putting it on, but still, check it out if you want to listen. Also, in a surprise breaking news, actually, just before I started recording, uh, it seems like Death Stranding is coming to uh, PC Game Pass. So if you're a PC Xbox Game Pass person, at the end of the month, you're going to be able to get your hands on that. That definitely, like, just looking online is, like, shaking, shaking up the world of the console warriors, but I just, I don't care. I just keep scrolling. Uh, on the other side of PC stuff, now Sony now officially has a PC PlayStation game website which is pretty cool it's a little more fleshed out and uh, a lot of people are speculating if this means more to come we've seen rumors of a PC launcher 
of PlayStation games, so I'm, I'm curious to see where things go as someone who jumps around between platforms. But in some heartbreaking news, the Iron Man game that never was. Yes, according to an interview uh, with MinMax, shout out to them. This was an interview with Christopher Sundberg, uh, who was actually the co-founder of Avalanche Studios. According to him, Avalanche Studios was working on an Iron Man game, an open world Iron Man adventure game that was canceled in around 2012. Avalanche Studios, for those of you who don't know, are the folks behind Just Cause, and one of my personal favorite, like underrated weird little open world games, Mad Max, uh, that I thought would have been a great fit for an Iron Man game, if you ask me, but unfortunately, it just didn't work out. Apparently they had a lot of cool shit going down with, you know, just flying and going anywhere you want and punching enemies through walls, which just sounds really exciting. Uh, as of right now, we don't have anything else about this game. So on screen here, I'm probably gonna show uh, Iron Man VR that came out a few years ago, which I didn't hate, but there's still so much more potential for an Iron Man game. The console Iron Man games that we got around the times of the movies, we're not that great. There's so much potential. And now with Marvel properties coming back stronger than ever to the gaming world, I'm curious to see if they do eventually do really do something with Iron Man. I said do a lot in that sentence, didn't I? Do do. Anyway, just another glimpse into what we could have had. I feel like all the time we get glimpses of that. There are so many video game projects that have been scrapped and canceled that we haven't heard about or maybe we'll never hear about, but thankfully at least we heard about this one, even if it hurts. Makes for an interesting story, fun to talk about. Anyway, that's all we got this week. I gotta get back to uh, reviewing a game. I am blasting through a game that comes out next week. So keep your eyes peeled for a before you buy. Back to work for me. Anyway, I, I do wanna hear what you guys think in the comments. What do you think about the whole Embracer Group thing? That is pretty wild. Also, Dead Island 2. Do you think the ship has sailed? Do you think the ship has long sailed? Or do you think it can really shake things up and make a comeback? To be honest, like to be completely straight, I wasn't the biggest fan of regular old Dead Island 1, but that's just me. Let's talk about all the gaming news stories this week. There's a lot of cool stuff, you know, your favorite Spider-Man mod, what you've been playing. Of course, let us know in that pinned comment up top what you've been playing, but whatever your thoughts at all, just let us know. We'll be down in the comments as usual, but things get a little crazy. So of course, if you want to yell at me directly, you know where to find me by now. Twitter and Instagram at Jake Baldino, my other YouTube channel also named Jake Baldino. Thanks for getting caught up on some quick news with us. I will always be here for you. All you gotta do is click the like button. It helps us, that's it. But thanks for watching guys, I'm Jake Baldino. See you guys next time, have a great safe weekend. Pizza's on me.